So now that you have some sense of what the book means by institutions and why there is a diversity of them, uh, let's learn a little bit more about institutional diversity and then get into how one analyzes institutions given their diversity as well as the rules and norms that govern each type of institution. So here differences in technology affect the type of institutions that are used. What does it mean? It's showing an ref a refrigerator with produce, so you have vegetables, fruits and such. And what does it mean? You have uh, now technology available which can transport fruits from anywhere to anywhere which basically means you can go to the grocery store and find anything in any season so imagine the times when you grew something locally it depended on the season not every fruit and every vegetable grows in every season depending on where you are so what you consumed was very closely tied to what is available to you within reach now this is not the case you can get blueberries in winter you can get lush fresh tomatoes in winter you can get apples and uh, grapes and vegetables like carrots fruits kiwi cauliflower uh, cucumbers you know you know what we mean so the technology there is a grocery store which runs and stores these things for you. You go there and you know what to find and how you pay for it. As soon as you pick up things and stand in line, the cashier knows that you are there to pay. So she knows, he knows how to scan these things or weigh these things, what the prices are. You know, there is an entire system which runs very smoothly. There is no haggling involved. In India, sometimes you go to a, a vegetable vendor and you have you can bargain and if you don't bargain it could probably mean you are not a local and you don't know how to bargain and if they know that they may even quote you a higher price next time because they think you will buy whatever price is uh, quoted so there are these institutions where it's just about selling and buying produce and vegetables and there is a whole set of explicit and implicit rules and norms and if your norm is not to bargain uh, or you are not very good at bargaining or you hesitate to bargain then you will lose out but if you go to a, a store that has everything priced marked and you don't have any bargaining power but they also have other things like they are packaged differently they are made to look very good because they have a systematic uh, process of selecting things that look good that look fresh because they have been coated with a wax uh, a, a wax or wax wax w a x which you know indians have a trouble with v and w so wax which may or may not be good for you and so on and so forth so entire image comes into your mind about how this institution of buying produce can work on the other hand you here you have if you want to buy a ticket for a concert and you see people standing in line you would automatically join the back of the line if it's not India what do you suppose would happen if you bypass the line to buy your tickets although there might not be any uh, formal signs that is that say you need to wait for your turn it's generally assumed that you understand you have to do this so again this is an institution where concerts are played you know the uh, uh, person who is playing the music you like the singer or the band and you know where to go and buy the ticket you know how to stand in line you know the price often beforehand now you also have a way of buying it online to uh, skip the uh, the standing in line maybe you pay a little convenience fee but you save the time of going and standing in line or you buy way in advance so you get good seats you know there is this whole institution around this particular business so this give, begins to give you a sense of just how many types of institutions there are right Although we may not explicitly realize it, we have a lot of implicit knowledge of expected do's and don'ts in a variety of situations. So every day we are having interactions in multiple institutions, whether it's a school, a bank, a, a vendor, a concert, a movie, or whatever else, a bar, a restaurant, 
we are playing by rules without having to think about it. It's a very internalized process that we follow the rules. Frequently we are not even conscious of all the rules, norms and strategies we follow, nor have the social sciences developed adequate tools to help us translate our implicit knowledge into a consistently explicit theory of human behavior. When do people assimilate the rules and follow them automatically and when do they find ways to break them or when they don't understand the rules at all and so on and so forth. In most university courses student l students learn the language of a particular discipline from anthropology to economics, from psychology to political science, etc. This disciplinary narrowing of language may hinder our understanding of how to analyze the diverse set of situations we encounter is so in social life, right? I hope that's what it means. This disciplinary narrowing of language may hinder our understanding of how to analyze the diverse set of situations we encounter. It says is social life, it actually means in social life, I'm sure. The framework we discuss in this book may provide a common language to study these different situations. So you want basically to understand all the uh, institutions that are involved in running the commons. We want to know how to analyze them and how people's behavior affects the use of that institution which may be using of a common that is shared. Then how do you understand people's implicit and explicit behavior to manage, to sustain the commons and to achieve the triumph of the commons instead of creating tragedy of the commons, right? How to analyze institutions, the genes of institutions. There are millions of different species on our planet that interact in complex ways at, dif at different spatial and temporal scales. How does one study such complexity? One of the breakthroughs in biology is the concept of genes and the discovery of DNA, the building blocks of the diversity of life forms on Earth, right? Each DNA carries chromosomes, chromosomes carry genes, genes have information about your hair color, your nose, eye color, your height, your health, etc., your, your weaknesses in, the, in your intrinsic health, your propensity to get sick or stay healthy, and maybe even uh, uh, personalities like anger, addiction, etc. Can we develop an equivalent set of concepts for building blocks that create institutions? If you take any particular institution that we have been discussing, is there a DNA associated with that? This will help in the study of the large institutional diversity we observe around us. In this book, we will discuss the initial steps of a genomics of institutions that enable us to decode and compare institutions. Okay, uh, let me read this much and then we'll leave this and come back to action areas, uh, arenas and institutional analysis which we briefly mentioned already. Can we identify attributes of the context in which people carry out their repeated interactions in order to find communities that distinguish success stories from failures? This is a key word, repeated interactions. If there is a situation if you, uh, that you are going to go through repeatedly, then there must be some rules and norms that you automatically follow so that each time it's not reinventing things, reinventing how to make choices, how to buy things, how to sell things. Uh, how to find things, etc. Right? If we are successful with this, we may be able to explain behavior in a diversity of situations varying from markets and universities to religious groups and urban governance. This analysis of interactions among people may take place at a range of levels from the local to the global and we may analyze whether processes occurring at the local level may explain some of the challenges at the global level. So what are the religious differences and how are they related to institutional expectations, rules and norms or trusts and distrusts between uh, local populations or across the border, across language barriers and so on and so forth. All these become critical to understand because right now we are dealing with climate change which is a global problem. We are trying to negotiate at a global scale and then actions have to happen at a 
local level to add up to global outcomes in terms of keeping emissions low and protecting people from climate impacts and so on and so forth. So we'll come back and look at what we mean by action arenas and institutional uh, analysis. Okay, so that should uh, bring us close to the end of this chapter. As I said, they are short and uh, they will mostly take one or two podcasts except when we get into more detailed analysis. Okay.